Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Good morning. Well, nearly afternoon by the time we got up here today. It is absolutely freezing cold. So we have um, wrapped up the tarpaulin in here. That's why it's a bit darker. Um, and we're going to try and install this door. I'm not really happy about the quality of the door. It, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a service entrance for a garage door. So uh, it's a bit plasticky, um, but we're going to give it a go. We've got it. I've unwrapped it. We're not going to be sending it back. So first of all, I've got to try and figure out how to open it to remove it from its frame because it does come as a complete frame and door. And then we're going to install it in our service door hole, which is uh, slightly oversized for this door, but the next size door would not have fit that opening. So we've compromised a little bit, but oh, it is cold. So I found an old bathroom handle that, uh, that we have at the house, but uh, we just can't seem to be able to open it at the moment. I've, I've, pulled, I've pulled the frame out. But, uh, it's not brilliant. There we go. Ian's just putting a, pe a piece of wood as a blocker across the, um, the top of the door, metal door frame, ready to be able to install the actual door. Center it. Yeah, I will we'll just rip down some wood. That sort of works. Poor, oh, it was so cold up at the plot. Um, it said one degree but the wind was so oh. anyway i took the measurements i've got them all in my uh in my book so i'm going to run up a couple of um wood blockers whatever you want to call them shims for the side of each door and a header uh, so i can get those screwed onto the metalwork and uh it's easier just do it in the workshop on the table saw and if i need to plane them down to size i can do it here and even though it's cold in here, because I've run out of diesel for my heater. Um, it's warmer than outside. It's come up a nice bit of wood. I just give it a quick sand, just to take off the, the dirt and the mud. Um, right, now to do the verticals. Uh, these are gonna be 26 mil. Um, yeah, it's a shame I can't cut them in half because they're only 38, but I'll be able to use the, uh, the excess for something. Right, set up the, uh, the saw table, exactly the same procedure and then I'll get back to site and get these on the door. Just dry fitting those two pieces of wood I, um, I trimmed down in the workshop. So 26 mil, hopefully. I've got the one in there already. Right, I was being a bit too accurate, so I need to just trim this one down a little bit more, which means another trip back to the garage. That's okay, it's better to have a little bit to cut off. I'll get these two, in, uh, the top and the side in now. Uh, I have a little bit of tape that I'm just gonna put on the floor, just a barrier tape basically to, uh, for the wood to sit on. I am gonna put down sealant as well a bit cold it's not really adhering but the wood will just sit on that and then I'll put this back up just pilot holding them again Thank you. 
this one, because it's quite thick, it's 76 mil, the header. I'm just going to uh, put a couple of a recessed countersunk in. I'll just put a, let's have a look. 16 looks sharp. All my 25s, 28s are uh, getting a little blunt now, so I need to sharpen those. So I'm just gonna go down, let's have a look. As long as that's in there. So I've gotta go down to the head of that. These, um, these saw horses were made by Julie's dad 25 years ago, and uh, they're still working. He built them for uh, our last build, which was 25 years ago, back in the UK. We did a timber frame house out there, um, but we had a company that put up the kit, and then we went in afterwards and did all the finishing off, the electrics, plumbing, um, plasterboard, all the rest of it. But... Uh, yeah, her dad's an old carpenter and uh, he made this these benches for us and uh, we've had them ever since. And I haven't even replaced the tops yet, so uh, they're going strong. Right. There we go. All right, let's just offer him up. Uh, there's always something in the way. There. there we go. Right, trim that one down. And he's all nice and uh, flush. He gets away with the smaller screws on this one. Nearly forgot to put the sealant down. Right, even though these wooden strips are all cut to exact um, thickness, it is a bit skewy, so I've got these little spaces. My other side is perfect. With this little plastic thing, oh, there. All this will be hidden with trim. That's fine there. And now I'll get a screw in, but I'm gonna countersink first a little bit. Looked everywhere for the proper screws, but um, the local builder supply had no idea what we were talking about. So this is the best I'm coming up with. That should be all right. Right, I'm just gonna go down the rest of the door, putting in spaces where needed, and that should be it. Right, we got the door on. Yay. Seems to fit okay. I had to adjust some of the locking mechanism. Um, I think they uh, put it in a lock mode for uh, shipping. But now we're just taking the tape off. Is that the grand review? <laughs> white from white. So first things first, opening the door, which has been quite a struggle. Um, we've been putting this uh, cable outside or put my hand through the house wrap to collect this uh, cable, connecting it to one of the power stations to actually open the, uh, the garage door. But now, hopefully, oh. I can open it. Now for the lock. So this is what I was uh, saying about the lock. That is longer than that. So that's 50, 40. Now the original one we bought was 30, 30 because I thought it was a thin door. 
but there's so many different ones out there. So uh, if you are putting a door in, make sure you do get the right one. And if I'd have looked at the documentation for the door in the first place, it would have told me. But then again, if I'd have bought this kit in the first place, I wouldn't have needed it. We're living on chocolate biscuits and coffee because we always forget to bring up something for lunch. And once you've unpacked the van with all the kit, it's too much hassle to put it all back in, so. Stop complaining. <sighs> Woman a... made your coffee. Proper help. Proper help. Right, it is now time for the siding. It's not that we've been putting it off. It's just that there's so many jobs that need to be done before it goes in, all the house wrap, the seat, oh, the window, everything. So um, we're doing it. Yes. So we started on the front practicing because we've got the, uh, the, got to get it around the garage door. We've got it up against the wall. So we've done all those little fiddly bits um, just because it takes ages per board and it's not very good to film. So uh, we're now getting on with the side, or oh, siding, the siding here. Um, hopefully we'll just be able to whack it out really quickly now and uh, yeah I'll show you the front now. When we um, installed the garage door you saw that Ian put the two side pieces of wood on first and that was quite important to us because that dictated how we were going to do all our spacings so what we've done since is we've worked out what our gaps are going to be between the bardage the boarding and we've decided to put on all the backboards first, work our way along all the way round, and then we'll come back to the beginning and put the facial final board on top, which will go obviously like that. So the first one to go in on this side is the corner, of course. And we had a few problems because I've got the, uh, the beam at the top to cut around. But also, this front wall isn't truly plumb. The steel structure sort of went over slightly. So I'm just plumbing this right-hand side up. I scribed down this plank, this uh, board, and um, basically got this one plumb. So now when we carry along up here, they'll all be fine. So now it's just a matter of putting in my spacers, next board, spacer, next board, all the way along. So there's another cut one to do around the door. So we just spent a few minutes um, working all this out. With the door, it wouldn't have worked out if it had done the normal spacing, just like the garage door. So um, we've done it symmetrically. And now we're just going to put smaller panels up here and then put one big plank in the middle just to make it even. Um, it doesn't matter if all the gaps aren't the same, but I prefer to look at that than um, it all off and skew. Might look like I'm putting in too many, but I haven't got any in this middle section. So now we should be able just to keep going over and space it out. Oh, How many times got, have we said this, Ian? Now we got over the door. So, uh, oh, that looks all right then. Yeah. Although saying that, this switch is now going to... Oh no, look at that. Just misses it. Let's have a look. So, oh, uh, perfect. I might have to put this... I might leave it recessed, actually. 
I prefer it recessed so it doesn't stand out. you can't see down. it, yeah, yeah. You've got your Let's... space there, so you <clears throat> basically put the board in position. Yeah. The board. Hang on, let me put my space in there. And I'll, uh... and I'll bring the board over. Just move it out the way. <clears throat> All right, you on? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. On. Do these two at the top. Lift him up. Yeah, but it's at an angle, you see that's all. Oh, because it was all the other side. I'm more prepped for being the other way. <laughs> Hang oh, on. Yeah, yeah, but you need to pass. So we will leave it here for tonight. We're going to be back in the morning, hopefully to finish off around the side, because as soon as all of this is up like this, like a jail, um, the garage should be secure, so we can leave a few more things in here. All the locks are <clears> on, <throat> so um, that's the plan. We're going to, the goal is to basically side it all in to at least this level, and then... Finish the front. We'll finish the front yeah. as well. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Crack the whip. You've been seeing me uh, use quite a lot of screws. Now, I have tried to use my uh, nailer, but um, my big nailer is just not working very well. Um, but I've got a small um, finishing nailer that I, I did with the, um, the false beams outside. So I'm gonna give that a go. Um, I've got my little compressor up here, but oh, the, the hose is just a mess. And at my current workshop where I am, that hose has been a mess for the last 18 years. I just I try and hook it up, try and coil it nicely, but as soon as you pull it off, it goes everywhere. So I've just got this retractable um, air hose from Vivor. Now you see me use the, um, the magnetic drill. Um, I've had my ball float for the concrete, uh, several things and my um, laser, uh, my 360 degree laser, all from Vivor. Well, Vivor have noticed that and they sent me this retractable hose. So really happy and thank you to Vivor for um, helping me out with this. And uh, so I'm gonna install it, um, maybe temporarily, but I'm gonna install it just up here next to the front door. So I've got access to the outside and uh, I have to apologize for the noise, but Julie is down there with her mower. She loves it. She's constantly on it. She's getting quite a good driver now as well and hasn't sucked up any of the dogs. There they are digging away. I'm going to use the fittings that came with it, but I'm not going to use the, uh, the plugs for the block wall because I'm going to put it into my wood here. Um, at this section here, which is part of the I-beam, very, very sturdy, there is a 40 mil um, chunk of timber behind that. So I'm going to use that, but it's only 40 mil. These are slightly longer. So I've just made a pad just out of a bit of OSB and I'm going to uh, use that to pack it out and that should be a good fixing right into the wood then. That's pretty sturdy. All there is on the back here, there's just a rod that basically slots over this hole here and it should be in. Right, connect to my compressor and we'll give it a go. Uh, the last time I have to do this and then when it's cold, it's all stiff, isn't it, you know? In the nice warm summer, it's nice and pliable. 
There we go. In with the Vivo one. Let's see how far this can go. Well, that wasn't bad at all. Um, I think it's 30 meters, they say. Um, I can keep pulling it and pulling it until there was a bit of tension on it and then I let it go. But um, all right, soon flung right back in. So no more of those days of winding it all around the uh, compressor like you just saw me do earlier. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Now we've got to try and use it. So I've got to try and do this little square up here. In fact, it's actually a triangle, but um, I never got round to uh, finishing off this little section here on the uh, on the ridge. Let's get this measured off. Now I've used nine mil on this side. Around the rest of the garage, I'm using 12 mil because um, basically nothing's going to be attached to this wall here. Um, all the rest of it, I might want to put up shelving or various bits and bobs. So nine mil on here, 12 on the rest. And I've got one strip of nine. So I want to make sure, I think we're okay. That's 30 there, 30 to the top. We should be good. So I'll measure this up, get it all cut up. And then let's test out that uh, air nailer. And there we go. Perfect. So I have got my little Makita finishing nailer. It's not the right one, I know. Um, it should be little brads going into this. But um, well, I think these are little brads, but slightly larger anyway. But it'll be a good test. So luckily, my hose is just here. It's just locked off, so I've got a little bit more. There we go, and so I'll put some in here. It's a bit proud there, the metal, but um, from down there. Well, that works perfectly. I'm pretty happy with this hose. I've always wanted one, but they've just got a bit, bit more pricey, but the Vivo one is really reasonable. But um, Vivo said, thanks for doing all the other videos for nothing. How about we give you one of these and uh, just give us a mention. And uh, I'll put a link down in the description and uh, hopefully you'll get a bit of discount but it'll help us out as well if you actually buy through that link uh, we haven't got many of these we're only just starting but um, it's pretty handy so thanks to Viva again for um, providing this retractable air hose unit up to 30 meters easy to install and pretty cheap too right let me get on with this electrical box now and uh, while i'm up here to remind you this socket here or junction box more than a socket feeds a um, LED uh, sensor light out on the front of the garage. We haven't yet connected that up. Um, that's what these uh, tails are here. Um, these two here are live and they're just uh, straight 240 volt from the fuse box. So they're not switched or anything else, they just feed that light. Right, I think it's time to go and uh, help Julie out. I think she's just run out of fuel. Yeah, I've run out of fuel. Another bit of bank to finish. Yeah, it cuts really well, this machine. A lot of people um, giving us negative comments on it and saying, why don't you get a goat? Now, we will get animals, 
we've got the horse, but we can't bring him here because there's no fencing. We've got no fencing. That is a tiny electric fence for the cows. The cows seem to respect electric fencing a lot better than most animals. We'll have animals when we permanently get here, but if you want to price up just having goats on here, then what a thousand for fencing 500 for a shelter all the food all the um water plus we're not here all the summer we have to go away for work so it's, it's just impractical so um there used to be goats on here but the guy had to get rid of them so we're just cutting and mowing in the summer and then um eventually we'll bring the horse up here but until we've yeah. got fencing secure it's not a possibility so we'll get some fuel in this mower and julie carry on Anyway, Julie's my old goat, <laughs> you cheeky son. so get on with it. 